Hello, welcome to this week's How's the Market, Pensacola. Now, if you've watched the show for a little bit, you know that I normally start off talking about what just happened the prior week, prior weekend, what good things, and I was planning on this week talking about Pensacon and how things work there, but I felt remiss if I don't address what happened last week in the stock market and how it affects this industry, the real estate industry. So I'm not going to be as lighthearted. I want to explain basically what's happening right now so that I can show you guys as a knowledge broker that there are some opportunities for you right now, especially when it comes to real estate and mortgages. We are experiencing and what, what happened last week is what's called convexity. Okay, you can look that up. But in essence, here's what's happening. As equities drop, as the stock market drops, Fund managers, big fund managers that are promising or at least trying to get a certain rate of return get scared and they come out of equities and they go into the 10-year treasury yield. Now what happens, supply and demand, as things buy into the treasury yield, the yield actually goes down some. All right, so they're making less and less and less every time they buy more yields. And as more fund managers goes, it just perpetuates. There comes a point when the 10-year treasury yield is not as attractive as the mortgage bonds that you can get. So mortgage bonds will get you pretty much the same safety, a little bit more risk, but not much. And it's you can hide your money or hold it until we feel like the equities markets are going to turn around and move it back in. So we've seen a lot of buy-ins into the mortgage bond world too. What does that do? Same thing it does for the treasury. That's what convexity is. Same thing it does for the treasury, it drops rates. Now, a lot of this is coming out of a scare from coronavirus. I think some of the coronavirus stuff is perpetuated by the media. Um, that's just my thoughts. But I do believe you know the equity markets dropped more last week or have not dropped like that since 2008. The housing crash, which I told you, I told you, if you listen to my 5 Minutes in Real Estate podcast uh, or YouTube channel, I put up there that 2020 we were expecting a recession. Now, all a recession is is two quarters consecutively with lower GDP, gross domestic product. I don't know that we are the start of this. I think this coronavirus was probably just a catalyst. That's all. What does that give you opportunity-wise in the real estate world? Well, I saw a 30-year rate last week, Friday, at three and an eighth. Now the Fed's coming out and the Feds are gonna, are, 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 I don't understand them. I think that sometimes those 12, 13 people that make these votes, I, I don't get. Maybe they're just old and, and you know, I don't, I'm not an age person, I don't care, but I think you just got old school thinking because they've already wasted three rate cuts trying to keep the stock market propped up. Now they're talking about doing a rate cut to com, you know, combat coronavirus, which you know I heard somebody use an analogy over the weekend. It's like, that is like pulling up to somebody that has a flat tire and offering them a chocolate bar. You're not going to do anything for it. So why would we cut that again? But if they do, in their not so infinite wisdom, you can take advantage of it because we may, may see rates go into the twos, high twos. So what's going to happen if we do, it's going to be a cycle again. We will start to see a pickup in refinances. I've already gotten some phone calls going, hey, can you help me refinance? Sure, no problem. We're going to start seeing the refinances come again because if somebody's in the fours and they can get in the twos and maybe, maybe change it to a 15-year note. They've only been paying three years on a 30, but you're in the twos and you can get it at 15 and your payment either goes up slightly or doesn't go up at all. You just save 12 years off your mortgage. Why wouldn't you do that? So I think that your purchases, I think this is going to perpetuate the real estate market right now. We have a problem in our area. That problem is an inventory. And I'll show you that once we get to the rest of this show. But I did not want to, I felt honestly remiss if I did not explain convexity and what's happening so you guys can see a 30,000 foot view of what's going on behind what's happening, and how you can take advantage of it. Look at mortgage rates right now. It just is. Look at mortgage rates right now. They're going to be low for the foreseeable future. So low mortgage rates, low inventory, that's what's helping sellers get what they're asking for on these properties. And I'll show you the low inventory in a minute. Anyways, 
that's kind of what happened. There's your knowledge for the week. Uh, again, I normally like saying, hey, Pensacon was great. They had a, bo- a blast. There was a bunch of people that did gallery night. And you talk a lot about that. But I had to address, we saw the biggest stock market drop one day in history at like 1,200 and some odd points in a day. And that's the Dow. Now, understand there's a little scare when people talk about the Dow. I try and follow the S&P 500 more than I do the Dow because the Dow Jones Industrial Average is only 30 stocks. They try and take one of the best companies out of each industry and put them in. Okay, They don't always. There are couples that are you know two and three in the same industry. That's only 30 stocks, whereas the S&P 500 is 500. So I think that's a bigger macro view. But the Dow dropped 1,200 and some odd points. Like, biggest drop it's ever had. And the Dow actually dropped 3,000 last week. Biggest drop it's had since 2008, since the crash. Do I think the coronavirus is just a catalyst to where we will continue to see equities fall a little bit? Yes, last time I checked, the stock market's actually up 200 points today. Um, I I made a couple of moves with some put options because I did well with the drop. They say bulls make money, bears make money. Uh, If you don't know what the bulls trying to go up, the bears trying to go down. People bet when the stuff's going down. And I say bet, they invest. I shouldn't use the word bet, but some people do. And then they say pigs get slaughtered. If you try and do it all, then you're just going to die. Anyways, uh, financially. We did some moves there. I think that we are going to continue to struggle, especially with all the talks of coronavirus and what people are going to do to deal with it. One of my biggest holdings in my stock portfolio is Disney. I've put that out to a couple of people that have noticed me and Two things happened last week, coronavirus and the CEO, the longtime CEO, Bob Iger, stepped down all in one week. That stock dropped about, last I checked, that stock went from 146 to 116. So it's down $30 a share. If I didn't have some put options covering me, I would have lost a lot. But I learned a long time ago to buy and hedge. I, I say all this not to teach investment strategies in stocks. I understand them. You and I can have that conversation if you would like. I am not a stock analyst, though. I'm not a stock investor, um, advisor. I am a stock investor, but I'm not an advisor, so I can't go telling you individual stocks and what to do with them. I can just talk generalities. I try not to bring in stuff like convexity and other terms that I learned getting my MBA into this because I'd much rather just talk about what's going on here. But every once in a while, we've got to take that 30,000 foot view. And I thought this particular week, we just had to. With that being said, it w- I would also be remiss if I didn't show you the numbers from inventory and where we are in Escambia and Santa Rosa County this week. Let's go. I'm a man on a mission. My mission is to help people break through all the noise out there. And Don't need no permission. I want to help you get to actual truth. Permission. Don't you just want the truth? All right, so if you haven't seen the show yet uh, before, I always start to show off with this particular slide. It basically says, this is talking about inventory in our area. Now, this is inventory just housing all the way around. If you have between six and se- seven months, let me see if I can talk. If you have six and seven months worth of inventory, we have what's called a neutral market. Anything greater than seven months considered a buyer's market. Anything less than six months considered a seller's market. What the slide doesn't say. Anything greater than nine months is considered a hyper buyer's market. Anything less than three is considered a hyper seller's market. Let's take a look at the numbers for both Escambia and Santa Rosa County. If you haven't watched the preview, so on YouTube, Facebook, you're going to be able to see the whole thing. But on a couple of the other platforms, I'm going to be limited on time. So I'm going to put a link at the end of this to go watch either the beginning or the end, whichever way it is. Go do that. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to start off. This is Santa Rosa County, and as we've been doing for a while, everything under half a million dollars over here is considered your purchase or your listing price point. Over here is considered your month's inventory. It says between 400 and 450 is a almost a neutral. That's interesting that it says that, but it also has um, an original list price on one of these properties at $14 million. That's wrong. Somebody did something. So I think the data is a little skewed here. Everything under half a million dollars is still a hyper sellers, except this one pocket. We have seen the three to 400 creep up because these were, and look, 250 to 300 actually creeped up a little. Um, two to 250 creeped up a little. So these have actually creeped up some. I still get worried about 150 to 199. Because that's definitely a <clears throat> hyper, hyper seller's market. Anything in that price point, you need to call me. 
All right, we can get you stuff, especially with the rates coming down as lower. As people get lower on the rates that I was just talking about on the intro, then you're going to see additional purchases. There's two things that drive prices in real estate. It's demand and supply, mortgage rates, and the desirability to move. <clears throat> and I'm just going to go off on a tangent here for just a second because I need you to understand. It used to be, all the way up until the crash, 2008, that the average family would move about every six years. There's just averages nationwide, okay? There's some people I know here that have stayed there 20, 30 years. That's cool. That average has went all the way up to nine and a half years now. That happened because of the crash. People couldn't move. They were upside down on their mortgage. So nationwide, it's now gone up to nine and a half. There is a pent up demand, not only on the buy side, but also on the sell side. People are wanting to move up, down, sideways, whatever. I see, a, I, I'm in a couple of Facebook groups. I'm constantly seeing people want to move to our area. Why? Because they want to live where they vacation. I get it. We've got the constant rotation in the military. Cool. We've got some serious luxury even out there. Okay, I just listed this past week a $3.99 million house. They're on Perdido Key. I mean, it's ridiculous, like 8,500 square foot, two acres. I mean, it's just ridiculous. But that type of stuff is out still moving. Because I know that actually that 70 some odd hundred square foot is sitting on Pensacola Bay is about ready to close. So I know that price point is closing right at three, nine something. So all these price points are still moving. But in Santa Rosa County itself, we've got an issue with supply. I have been preaching that since Halloween of last year, that there is a supply inventory crisis in Santa Rosa County. All the way up to half a million. And half a million to 550 is still not necessarily a hyper seller side, but it's still a seller side. 550 to 600 is a hyper buyers. So this pocket, and I remember this last year because I had a property, it was in Escambia County, and this same dilemma where you got sellers, almost hyper sellers, 5 to 550, but 550 to 6 is hyper buyers. So an awkward conversation. I had to have the conversation with the seller because we were at 550. So we literally floated right there in the middle. Well, my marketing changes if it's a seller's or a hyper seller's or if it's a buyer's or a hyper buyer's. The marketing has to change. The negotiation has to change. You as a buyer, if you're looking to buy something like that and you see it at 575, you understand the buyer is almost in the driver's seat there. Now, they're not going to give it away, but you may be able to get some concessions. You may be able to get something off the price. You know, they, it looks like they are selling around 97, 98% of list, but I'm wondering how much of that is concessions as well. 575, you get one point in concessions, that's 5,700 bucks. Two points, what, 10, five? 11, five, something like that? Let me see if I can math this one. Anyways, six to 650, uh, hyper buyer's market. 650 to 700, sellers. Your ultra luxury in Santa Rosa County, 700,000 plus, you got 15 prop, or fifteen months worth of inventory. So that's not moving as fast. But I need you guys to go back and watch the last couple of weeks. You'll see in Santa Rosa County, almost all of this was red up until a week or so ago. All right, and this one, I think there's a number mixed up. I think we'll see something different. I don't think we'll see six months worth of inventory or 5.8 next week. I think it was just a calculation error. All right, we did see one of these creep up into three. I think it was two, it may have been three to 350 but it may have been 250 to 300 that creeped up to 3% or three months inventory last month, last week. Um, and now it's back down to 2.9. Some of this is new builds as well. Some of this is new builds. I've got a lot of new builds coming on the market. And so when they do that, they put it in the MLS and they put one address, one, two, three banana street, right? That one address is just their model. So they put every one of their models and they may sell nine properties, but that model stays on. So it skews the data just a little. But overall, this is what Santa Rosa County looks like as of this week. Let's take a look at Escambia, see what's going on. Pretty much the same thing. Everything under 3 or 250 hyper sellers market. So all your first time home buyers, that's where they fit into hyper sellers market. Just put a property on the market right before I shot the show at 245. Since I've prepped for this show, I've already gotten three phone calls. It was one of those, hey, what, what, this, so I know that people are looking right here. I know they are. Um, 250 to 500, seller's market. 
So again, everything under half a million, even in a Scambia County, seller's market or a hyper seller's market. That 350 to 400, 5.1. Some of that's new builds. All right, five to 550. It's considered a slight buyer's market. So we're almost over neutrals and it's a slight buyer's market. Whereas the 550 to 600, hyper buyer's market. 600 to 650, almost a hyper seller's. So where we talked at 550 in Santa Rosa County, that same conversation is happening at 600 in Escambia. It just is. That's what's happening. And then you got a hyper buyer's market all the way across for uh, 650 to 700 and 700 plus. So I know that that multi-million dollar property that I have is, uh, yeah, definitely, that's definitely a hyper buyer's market. And we knew that. We knew that going in. But supply demand and interest rates, mortgage rates. Those are two things that really drive real estate. And this week, there is opportunities for sellers and homeowners and buyers. It's like all parts of the table have an opportunity right now that I want them to try and take advantage of. Sellers, if you're wanting to, if the, if you're wanting to move or if you're wanting to get out from underneath that property, if you want, now is the time to actually do that. We are in the spring buying market. Our area of the spring buying market starts in January. We're sitting here in March. The Maguire's 5K is this weekend. Okay, they're, they're, we are slap into it. I've got people looking every day. I've got at least 10 clients that I know of that asked me to be put on uh, our preferred buyer list where I send them something the minute it comes on the market. That's how come I know there was three phone calls immediately when I took that listing because it's, they're on that type of stuff. There is a demand from buyers. So if you're looking to get rid of something, cool. If you're looking to refinance, I think we're going to see a big wave of refinances come in, especially if rates get in the twos. They get in the high twos, are you kidding me? And with the way the Fed's talking, we may, we may. So I think we're gonna have a refinance cycle that's gonna happen again, which is gonna feed some of our banking stocks. That may help the stock market a little and help the economy a little. And then you've got sellers wanting to move. You've got the pent up demand all the way around. So we're in a unique trifecta if you will that's why i'm asking people if you watch this show and you've got questions call me reach out to me so that we can have the honest conversations i'm not just going to sit there and blow smoke hopefully you've seen that if you've seen a couple of these episodes i'm going to give you data i'm going to explain your options i had a customer call me last week he said i'm thinking about selling we sat down and talked and i wanted to know what he wanted to do he wants to retire down south florida in seven years. So his thoughts were, I'm gonna sell now and rent for the next seven years. And I went, why? Why would we do that? And he could not come up with a really good information. I'm like, you could pay down seven more years. And if you look at the economies and the economist, especially on the real estate side, you ask even the most bearish people in real estate, is real estate gonna be up in five years? 100% of the economist say yes. There's nothing to indicate a real estate crash. When I talked earlier on this show, I talked about a recession, 2020. I talked about this in 2018. If you look at the last five recessions, three of them real estate went up. One of them real estate went down less than 1%. It was just the last one where real estate drove the recession that we went down and everybody's thinking that's the knee-jerk reaction. In actuality, it looks like real estate's going to continue to go up because of the trifecta. We're not over leveraged. We're just not. You look, it's still difficult to get a mortgage for some people. The people that were easy to get a mortgage for in 2005. It's still difficult for them to get it. Right? You have to prove everything. You can't do the liar loans like they were doing in 2005 all day. Just give me an idea of what you're thinking you make. Okay, sure, you're approved. Whatever. That type of equity is just not there. And then our supply, as you've seen from these numbers, are way down. Are way down. That one customer, I told him, no, I don't think it's a good time for you to sell. I just don't. So don't think if you reach out to me that I'm gonna push you to sell. No, if it meets your goals, cool. I'll help you do it. I've got plenty of clients that that's meeting their goals and I know I'm gonna be taking some listings on in the next three weeks, four weeks because they reached out to me around Halloween and said, hey, come late spring, Easter time frame, I wanna list the house because I want to stay here through school year. Then we're gonna see an inventory pick up a little bit. 
But with rates down like this, you have got a pent up demand. So you have got an opportunity you can take right now if you utilize it. All right, a little bit more serious, seriousness in today's show. I know I've been doing, uh, I'm usually cracking jokes, but not today. There was just, we've got to talk business. We've got to talk business. Uh, stay, if you look at the links, there's going to be some free reports that you can get. If you're thinking about doing anything, just give me a shout. Give me a shout. All right, I hope this helps. I hope that this information is something you can utilize to make the best decision for you and yours. That is my true goal of this entire show. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. I'm a man on a mission. My mission is to help people break through all the noise out there. And Don't need no permission. I want to help you get to actual truth. Don't you just want the truth?